Hi, this is Vladimir, and today I want to talk about coding. In this video, I will focus on three things. First, I'll justify why I think knowing how to code is important for a successful career in DevOps. After that, we'll find out what programming language is the best choice for a DevOps engineer. And finally, we'll do some live coding. I will solve a typical coding problem that is very often asked during DevOps job interviews. I wanted to base the answer to this question not just on my subjective opinion, but rather look at the data. So I reviewed a handful of job postings and counted how many times programming is listed as a requirement. And here's what I found. More than 60% of DevOps jobs have programming skills mentioned as a requirement. That can sound overwhelming because learning programming from scratch is challenging and time consuming. But you don't need to worry. Uh, in most cases, programming is not a primary requirement, but rather nice to have. Taking this into consideration, I'd rather say that programming skills are not absolutely critical, but at the same time they will increase your chances of getting a job. Okay, we've identified that we need to know programming, but what language to choose? In the job postings that I reviewed, Python is the absolute leader and the bash is on the second place. Now you might have more understanding about whether you need to consider improving your coding skills. If I convinced you to start learning programming, stick with me now and I will show you a typical coding problem that is very popular during DevOps interviews. I encountered this challenge when I was applying for a role in a company called Coinbase. Also, I heard from some folks that this coding challenge is extremely popular when hiring for a production engineer role in a company called Facebook. Let's start from the task definition. Given a number n and a file, read the last n lines of that file. So I've prepared a file and our goal is to write a program that will output these three lines. Basically, we are creating our own implementation of the tail utility. Let me show how it works. We will pass two arguments. Minus three means show the last three lines and the file name to be tailed. Let's start coding. To solve the task, I will use Python. As we discussed earlier, it's the most desirable programming language for a DevOps engineer. The easiest and the most straightforward approach is simply to invoke tail from within our Python script. As easy as that, just two lines. Let's switch to the terminal and test it. Very cool, works without issues. Now we will make our code prettier. We will make it a function and pass the name and the number of lines to be displayed as arguments. The syntax you see is called fstring. Using fstring, Python allows us to interpolate variables directly inside the string. This means that during the execution, Python will replace n with the actual number of lines that we pass, and the file underscore name will be replaced with the actual file name. Let's run it one more time and make sure it is still working. Perhaps you wondered if that's supposed to be that easy, and your concern is actually right. In fact, using tail is considered more like a cheating. Some variants of this task will explicitly tell you in the description that you are not allowed to use tail. And if you don't see this constraint, just clarify with an interviewer whether this uh, solution is acceptable or not. Most likely not, and most likely you are expected to demonstrate how you can handle files using standard functionality of the of the programming language that you've chosen. Let me show you how to do this in Python. So let's create one more file and re-implement our solution without using tail. First, we will open the file for reading. After that, we will load the contents of the file into memory and access it as a Python list using the readlines function. Actually, let's print it immediately to see what will happen. When we run it, we see contents of the file represented as a Python list. Our, our next goal is to only display these three last lines, or whatever number we passed to our function. To achieve this, we will use Python slices. Let me show you some pictures to explain how it works. Assume we have a list. Each element in this list has its own index, or in other words, an address. We can use this index to extract an element. This example will return the element number two, which contains a letter C. However, in Python, it doesn't end with accessing just a single element. We can slice our list into smaller sublists by providing a range. For example, here's how we get everything after the second element. Or we can extract everything that's located before some index. Or between two indexes. In this example, everything that falls between index 2 and index 4 is returned. 
We can also use negative indexes. In this example, minus 1 returns the first element starting from the end of the list, or everything starting from the third element from the end of the list towards the minus first element from the end of the list. And obviously, we can obtain everything starting from the third element towards the very end. And this is essentially what we need to use. Let's jump back into the editor and adjust our code so it shows only the last n elements. Very cool, now it works as expected, but does not look visually good. Instead of printing it as a list, it's better to make it look similar to how tail is presenting the output. To do this, we will iterate through the list and print each element individually. It looks better, but still not perfect. These empty spaces between each line is something I'd rather get rid of. This is happening because each line we are processing already have slash n character at the end, and print also adding one more slash n by default. To fix that, we will change the default behavior of the print method and extract it not to add redundant slash n. Now it looks exactly as we expected and works perfectly. However, we haven't done yet. This solution is simple and elegant, but there are corner cases when it is completely useless and doesn't work. And interviewers, in fact, expecting you to show how you solve these corner cases. Let me show you. Behind the scenes, I've prepared a large file. As you can see, its size is 22 gigabytes. It is very similar to the original file. We can tail it the same way. The only difference is that it's just bigger. We will point our script to the file and see what will happen. The terminal just hang. Is it expected? If we check resource utilization, we can see that our Python script is using an enormous amount of memory and the number is only growing. Let's stop the execution and think about what's the reason for this behavior. The problem is that the read lines function loads an entire file into memory. While the file can fit into our hard drive that is large enough, it doesn't fit into our RAM, which is significantly smaller. We will need to create a third solution that is able to handle these types of situations without having to load the entire file into memory. I will show you how to do that. First, we will open the file. This operation isn't different from our previous implementation. After that, we will need to calculate the file size. I will explain why we need it as we progress. To do this, we will use the stat function on the standard Python library. And also, declare a couple of variables and the loop. Within this loop, the most interesting part is happening. This seek function allows us to go through the file byte by byte and read it backward. Let me explain what is happening. Let's say we have a file. A file can be considered as an array of bytes. File size minus buffer size multiplied by i will point us to the last byte of the file. Seek will act conceptually similar to this slice that we have used previously and cut everything from the starting position back to the end of the file. When we increment i, additional bytes are grabbed. That's why we need a loop. Next, we just read the segment and print it. Also, don't forget to increment your counter. This time, to test our script, we will use the debugger. For those of you who are unaware, a debugger is a programming tool that allows setting breakpoints. In other words, points where execution of the program will be paused. The result seems proper. However, the script is not planning to complete, even after we print the desired three lines. That's because we haven't added any exit conditions from our loop. This is also called an infinite loop. That's a very typical bug in programming. We need to find out the way for manually counting the number of lines processed and exiting when the desired number of lines is reached. A line is separated by slash n character. This means every time we encounter slash n, we can increment the counter. And whenever the number of line reads hits the desired value, we will print the result and exit. Also, we don't need to print out the file contents of each iteration, so we will remove the original print function. Let's run it one more time and check the outcomes. Very cool. It works with a large file. However, instead of three lines, it returns only two. Let's use debugger one more time to investigate why this is happening. There is one more useful feature of the debugger. It allows us to see the contents of a variable at any moment during the execution of our code. Let's look at our line variable. 
we can notice that there are three slash n characters that already surround our two lines, and this looks reasonable. This happens because there is an empty new line at the end of the file. This is also called trailing new line. This means we can consider increasing the threshold of our exit condition and have it as n plus 1 instead of n. So in our case, 4 slash n characters will surround 3 lines. However, while it's considered a best practice to end each file with a trailing new line, in case it's for some reason missing, the program will print 4 lines instead of 3. So I've decided to come up with a universal solution that will behave the same way for both cases. We just need to add an additional check. We will increment the counter only when there is slash n and the length of the segment is not 1. In other words, if the first character that we see is a new line, it will be skipped and not counted as a separate line. We will run the script one more time and check the result. Good, but again not perfect. I don't like these white spaces at the beginning and at the end. Let's remove them. The last one is removed using the same method that we used in our previous implementation. And the first one is there because the line starting with slash n. We just slice our string and print everything but the first character. Let's run it again, and it works as expected. At this stage, we can consider the task completed. Thank you for watching till the very end. I will upload all codes to GitHub so you can review them if you would like. If you enjoyed the video, please support the effort by giving a like and subscribing. Also, you can connect with me on social media. All links are in the description. Goodbye and see you later.